if you want to feel better about your health and you want to feel like a really in shape, healthy person, even if you're not, go on a cruise ship for a week. <laughs> a lot of drinkers and eaters on those ships. It'll drink and eat you into feeling great. I, wow. I had never been on a cruise ship, ever. And Louis Black booked a comedy cruise and made me go. And I got to Miami, I'd never even seen a cruise ship up close. They're humongous. It holds 4,000 people. It's gigantic. My sister goes, what was it like? Maybe me and Matt will go. I go, here's what it was like. Picture if we were all in Las Vegas, standing in the Bellagio, and all of a sudden, it just sailed away. The whole building, and nobody panicked or acted weird. I <laughs> say, bye. <laughs> hey, want to try a monkey ass rum punch? Yes, I love monkey ass rum punch. <laughs> Seven monkey rum punches later, you hear, and now we will be doing the safety drill. What? What? I'm hammered. I can't do a safety drill. It is on your musker station, which is located on the back of your key card. It will not match your deck or room, so please pay. What, 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 what? Now there's math involved? This is a terrible vacation. There's no math on vacation. <laughs> I finally found my room, and I was next to these lovely people from Wisconsin, and they had balloons all over their door. And uh, I was like, oh, hey, is it somebody's birthday or anniversary? And the guy goes, no. We just get so hammered on these ship and these rooms all look alike. So we decorate our door. <laughs> and the good news for you, sweetheart, is every time you find this door, you got a 50-50 chance of finding your room. <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Milwaukee. You are my new best friend. Don't tell me alcoholics are lazy. Look at that energy. He had to get tape, balloons. He had to stop smoking for four seconds to blow them up. There's a lot of activities. Oh, yeah. You get on this ship, and there's this giant neon board. It looks like a Vegas sports betting board. You're like, oh, it's still overwhelming. You're like, oh, that looks fun. That looks fun. Well, if you're a sleeper inner or, or a drinker later, you will not be involved in any of these activities <laughs> because these will require you to be up at 6 a.m. with a fanny pack on, ready to jump in some dinghy with your new friends from Buffalo. And, uh... Because my friend Shay wanted to do it all. And I'm like, no, I am not getting up at 6 a.m. to go to Stingray Village. I, I, I don't have it in me. I, if someone puts the Stingrays in my bathtub, I will pet them. But I am not, I, I'm not doing that. I don't care enough. Her and her husband, Mike, they did every activity. You sure? And she checked back in. You sure, Kathleen? Tomorrow we're going to zip line through the Mexican jungle. Yeah. I'm sure. There is nothing I can think of that would make me projectile vomit more quickly <laughs> than to be hot and hung over and shot through a Mexican jungle on a rubber band. No. No, I'm good. I am good right here on this chair with my monkey ass rum punch. And you know what? You call me crazy, Shay, but I question the safety of that apparatus. I truly do. Oh, no, 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 they make you sign a form. Really? What form? Who, who, who made those up? Juan and Julio in the van that won't be there when you come back with your flesh-eating bacteria wound that there's no hospital around. Hope you have a good time with the ship, doctor, getting your bacteria eating leg fixed up. If you're a drinker or a sleeper in her, your activity adventure will consist of getting off that ship at about noon into some sad little Mexican town where you're gonna hear a guy in an alley go, psst, psst. <laughs> And you don't know why, but you're gonna go over that guy. Because you want to hear what he has to offer. And <laughs> you're gonna go over there, and he's gonna show you a clipboard with pictures of pretty fish. And he's going to tell you he can take you to snorkel in there for $20. And you're going to say 10 <laughs> You don't know why he even said that. And then he's going to say 15 
and the next thing you know, you're gonna be on a rickety ass Partridge family bus going to Christ knows where. <laughs> because that's when Lou got the maddest he's ever been at me because we were the only two that agreed to this adventure. <laughs> he was like, this is stupid. This is the stupidest thing you've ever taught me into. We don't know who the fuck that man is. We don't know where this bus is really going. I said, I know, Lou. That's why this is a real adventure. <laughs> Those people on that Royal Caribbean ship know exactly what time they're coming back tonight. <laughs> we may never come back tonight, Lou. Do you understand the level of excitement I have provided for $15 a man? Come on. The worst thing about a cruise ship, though, is they have a TV channel on your uh, a little boat channel. And in the afternoons, when I first turned it on, it's a picture of where you are in the ocean because there's cameras on the outside of the boat. You go, oh, isn't that lovely? And it's just the sea and nice spa music. But in the morning, no. When you turn that channel on, it's not the lovely ocean with spa music. It's a picture of your bill from the day before. <laughs> right. Oh, how mean is that? What kind of buzzkill is that? This is vacation. I don't need to review my bad behavior on a daily basis. What kind of sadist is running this ship? That is horrible. That, all that can wait till sad Sunday when it's checkout time. <laughs> and I see the bill and I go, oh my God. And then I become alarmed and I have that conversation that I seem to have with myself about once a year when I see it on paper and go, holy Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think you're an alcoholic. <laughs> hey, hey, shh. Hey, it was vacation. <laughs> ah, you bought drinks for those nice people from Buffalo. The drinks were overpriced. I think you need to take that alcoholic test online. <gasps> Always guess wrong. They don't let you explain anything. The world is black and white to those people. The world is not a black and white place. The world has gray areas. Question number four example. Do you drink at home alone? True. However, I used to go out and drink with my friends at bars, and then they said I couldn't drink and drive. So now I stay home sometimes and drink and watch Shark Week. So, am I an alcoholic or am I just a really good citizen who loves America? I love America. <laughs> How you doing, Bubba J? I'm doing pretty good. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I, I was fixing to come to here and I went out the front door to come here and I came here and I got here and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Bubba J, what does the J stand for? Uh, my last name is Junior. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing they didn't name you Junior. Yeah, I'd be done Junior Junior. <laughs> That's my brother's name. Oh. <laughs> so, Bubba J, what have you been doing today? I've been watching NASCAR and drinking beer. <laughs> That's your favorite sport. Yeah, NASCAR is too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, NASCAR is very hot right now. Oh, I know. Everybody loves NASCAR. Well, sweet daddy said it's just a bunch of guys driving in a circle. Oh, I know. That's my favorite part. They're making a left turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sport that's easy to follow when you're handling. <laughs> I understand you got a new tattoo. Yeah, I, I got another one somewhere else that'll grow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? They got it. Yeah. 
I'm tired of hearing that most NASCAR fans drink too much. Oh, because it's not true? Oh, no, it's true. I'm just tired of hearing it. <laughs> Makes me thirsty for another beer. <laughs> Oh, besides beer, do you ever have wine at the track? Yeah, they have box wine. Box wine. Yeah, it's wine that comes in a box. Yeah, it's great because if you had too much to drink, then you got something to throw up in. <laughs> Bubba J, don't you worry about your health? Huh? Your health? Oh, like what? Your liver? Oh, no. My last deduction is the aliens took it. <laughs> You think you got abducted by aliens? I don't think, I know. They took me and they stuck something in my butt. <laughs> and not in the good way. <laughs> Look, Bubba J, when you, when you go to a NASCAR race and you party a lot, who, uh, who is your designated driver? What the fuck is that? <laughs> do, do you drive drunk? No, officer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba J, have you ever had an intervention? Yeah, and penicillin cleared it right up. <laughs> we put them in daycare. They don't warn you about daycare. The first two weeks are rough. I had not taken him to daycare, okay? I work nights, my wife does mornings. One night my wife says, tomorrow take him to daycare. I said, I can do that, okay? I get to daycare, as soon as my son sees the daycare, he goes, no, daddy, no. Please, daddy, no. And I was like, what are they doing to you at daycare? Show me on this doll. <laughs> I called my wife right away, I said, babe, he said, no, daddy, no. My wife's a savage. She goes, drop him off. He'll get over it. I was like, ooh. You got to stay, buddy. I'm just the assistant coach. Your mom's the head coach. He cried the whole time, man. It hurt me. I left him in the room. He was crying to me. Daddy, no. I was crying back to him. I'm sorry. But your mother is scary. I don't take him to daycare anymore. No, sir. I make the wife do it. I pick him up like a hero. I show up every day all badass. I came as soon as I heard, son. Let's go. Who left you here? I woke up. You were gone. What happened? Babe? That's how she is. Let's go. Look, man, I will admit to you right now, being the dad is the best job in the world. Ladies, you got it tough. I will admit that. So if your wife takes care of your kids, give her a round of applause, man. Women are amazing. Thank you. My wife, my wife's amazing. She does a great job with that little boy, but recently she had a mommy meltdown. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. Scared all of us. It was a normal day at the house. I'm sitting on the couch like I do watching TV. I don't know what she's doing. And all I hear is my son go, babe, 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 babe. And remember, I'm trying to watch TV, so I'm like, babe. <laughs> and my son goes, babe, babe. And then my wife just goes, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh man, you're gonna have to. <laughs> we just got him. A lot of my female stand-up comic friends who are a lot more successful and famous than me discouraged me from having a kid. And they were like, Allie, why are you gonna have a kid? You're just gonna become, you're gonna disappear and you're gonna become some lame stay-at-home mom. I was like, yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> that's the point. This is the ultimate trap. I won, you know? Another thing a lot of my friends said to me when they were discouraging me from having a kid, they were like, why are you gonna have a kid? Why don't you just travel the world with your husband and just do whatever you want for the rest of your lives with no kid attached? I was like, yeah, that's cool, until my husband dies, which he's definitely gonna before me. 
because I'm an Asian woman and therefore guaranteed to live until I'm a billion. <laughs> I'm guaranteed, like a turtle from the Galapagos, okay? <laughs> we all know the phrase, black don't crack. Well, Asian don't die. <laughs> we don't die, especially the women. We live forever. And you know why we're such bad drivers? Because we're trying to die. <laughs> we're like, yeah, let me see how invincible I really am. I'm gonna make this left hand turn signal and ignore this red light completely. I gotta make a right turn. I changed my mind, it's a U turn. I changed my mind again, it's an O turn. Every time I get into a car accident, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, not again. <laughs> I need to hide my face so that everybody doesn't see that it's what everybody thought it was gonna be. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. My Toyota Corolla is a mess. There's this huge bear claw scratch on the side from this aggressive brick wall that came out of nowhere. <laughs> and then on the hood, there's multiple handprints from pedestrians who have had to alert me of their existence. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm still here, you know? I need to have children to keep me company when I get older. It's lonely. My mom is 80 going through a full-blown midlife crisis. Because she knows that she's got a century more to go. And she is so lonely. All of her white friends, dead. Her Mexican friends, dead. Black friends, dead. I'm just kidding. She doesn't have any black friends. Life is not Rush Hour, the movie, okay? I need children to be there for me when I'm older, when I get as old as her. And, and when I say be there for me, I mean pay for me when my husband isn't around to support me anymore. I'm not trying to be one of those old Chinese ladies who recycles for a living. That's not my destiny, okay? Old Chinese ladies, they don't give a fuck. They got no shame. They're like, I'm just gonna recycle, go bald, go to the park, do this shit. <laughs> they do that because it's a free activity for them. They do it in their their big-ass V. Stiviano visor, their Darth Vader Tomb Raider Boba Fett helmet. They wear that to protect themselves from their arch nemesis, the sun. They're in a contest to see who's gonna burn out first. Old Asian ladies and the sun are like the Tupac and Biggie of longevity. It's true, I used to get so mad at my dad, you know? I inherited things from him, though. Do you inherit it? We, no money. <laughs> I inherited this sound from him. <laughs> I inherited this disapproving look. <laughs> this sound. Ah. <laughs> ha! <laughs> I inherited this from my mom. Oh. You all right, Mom? I guess. <laughs> My mom was real passive aggressive. She was very funny, though. You knew you'd park somewhere, she'd go, oh, you're gonna, are you gonna park here? <laughs> well, I could get, try and get closer. Oh, it's okay, I, I guess I could walk from here. <laughs> And my dad, you know, he didn't really like people. My dad was like, I hate that guy. 
Somebody would come in and go, oh, I hate that guy. Do you know him? I don't need to know him to hate him. <laughs> well, I love my parents. I miss them, you know? I don't want them back, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I learned about all that, you know, families and stuff. When I did the uh, Family Feud, I learned a lot about families because families, like, it's hard to find five in a family that are functional. It's really... <laughs> It's rough. They'd interview... Listen, thousands of people would audition and they would... Uh, <laughs> you know? And as I'd go down the thing, you know, the first one would be the husband or wife and all into it. And the next one... And then sometimes the third was the son. He would do pretty good. Then get to the cousin. <laughs> How you doing? What? Is it my turn? <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> it was just so funny, because I go, oh, it's hard, it's hard. My family even played it. We, we, we lost. <laughs> I froze up. I got under, I go, they said, Dave, your favorite place in the house. <sighs> the garage? And then the answer was bed. I should have had that. <laughs> I'm always in my bed. As my dad once said, Louie, you're the laziest human being on earth. Well, thank you, Father. It's not a compliment! <laughs> then my mom, the greatest person in the world, goes, well, Andy, you did say world. Driving around the city the last couple days, I couldn't help but realize that here in D.C., just like everywhere else in the country, gas prices suck. <laughs> My wife and I live in L.A., and we, uh, not long ago, were the proud owners of two big, giant SUVs, and uh, we decided to do the economically and ecologically right thing. We uh, got rid of one of the big, giant SUVs and got a Prius. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. It's a great vehicle. You jump on the freeway and punch and it goes... <laughs> and when you can drive underneath an 18-wheeler and go, that is really dirty, and drive back out... <laughs> that is just too damn small. It is kind of cool when you go to the gas pump to fill up, because in one tank you've driven like two or 3,000 miles, and you go and fill up, it's like, oh, all done, I'll be damned. <laughs> 10 cents, that's amazing! <laughs> Not used to a vehicle like this, so I've always had big trucks and big SUVs, and the one vehicle I refuse to get rid of, I've had it for 10 years, it's paid for, I love this thing, I've taken good care of it. I know it's not politically correct to drive it anymore, but I don't care, it's the H1 Hummer, the real one, the big one, the military one. <laughs> I love this thing. It has a 38-gallon tank. Gets seven miles to the gallon. Diesel, where I live at its peak, was $3.84 a gallon. Yeah, I went to fill it up that week. It wasn't even empty. It cost me $148. I pushed the vehicle home. As it rolled into the driveway, I called my kids out and I said, girls, look at our new front yard ornament. Get in the Prius. <laughs> you suck that. E -e -e. I used to pick Priuses out of the grill of my Hummer. <laughs> During the holidays last year, we had to take the Hummer to get a little maintenance done on it. And uh, then we went to pick it up when it was finished and we're driving home and my wife is behind me. She's driving a Hummer. I'm in front, I'm driving the Prius. I was tricked somehow. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> But she calls me on the cell phone and she's laughing. <laughs> Let me explain to you why. The Prius that we own is not a black Prius, it's not a red Prius, it's a blue Prius. But it's not really a blue Prius, it's more of a blue Prius. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Sparkly! <laughs> I did that a little too well, didn't I? I...
And also while I'm driving, I'm holding in my left arm my wife's three pound chihuahua. And you have to hold this dog when you're driving, otherwise it'll fall down between the seats and you're like, where the hell is this dog? <laughs> oh, there you are. Let me put down the parking brake. That'll hold you, you little bastard. <laughs> oh, I got a shift. <laughs> oh. your head. I'm sorry. I thought it was a little shifty thingy. It's <laughs> same size and leather and fur. I don't know the difference. And I, I thought I was grinding the gears. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that. That's the stupidest joke I tell all night. So, And a chihuahua. That's my wife's idea of the family pet. The dog I picked out for us is Bill, our golden retriever. He's 80 pounds. Now that is a dog, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> By the way, I named him Bill because I've got him when Clinton was in office and as a puppy, he was humping everything. <laughs> but when it comes to dogs, the big ones, the little ones, I have criteria for what is and is not a dog. Here's what is not a dog. Anything that bounces when it barks. <laughs> Not a dog. Anything I can easily drop kick over my back fence. <laughs> Not a dog. Anything that's regularly terrified by a running leaf. <laughs> Not a dog. It's a yapping beanie baby. That's what that is. <laughs> it's the Richard Simmons of canines. That's all I'm saying. Yep, 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 yep. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Bill sat right next to me. I don't know either. <laughs> You're a genius. Do it again. <laughs> I figured out size does matter in the canine brain. Bill, golden retriever, very smart animal. When he was a puppy and I had to potty train him, if he pooped on the living room carpet, I stuck his nose in it. Three times later, he figured out, oh, I'm not supposed to crap here. <laughs> next two dogs, same thing. Now the little brain dead chihuahua comes along. <laughs> She poops on the living room carpet. I stick her nose in it three times later. She thinks, oh, I'm not supposed to crap ever. <laughs> and that's why they shake. Another way that Chihuahua proved her lack of intelligence, most dogs know when you find a stick in the yard and you put it in your mouth and you run with it, you put the stick in your mouth sideways. <laughs> I am not kidding. This little idiot dog found a stick about as long as she was. She stuck it in her mouth to run with it, but it was sticking straight out the front. This is all true. We're all sitting on the couch watching TV. She comes running through the house as fast as she can. That stick's sticking straight out. And as she runs across the carpet in front of us, for some reason, she decided to quickly look down. <laughs> oh yeah, stick stuck in the carpet, crammed down her throat. With momentum, she actually pole vaulted over the stick. <laughs> Of course, my wife and my girls were like, ah! I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and then I thought, damn, if she'd been going just a little faster, I'd have a new puppet, a chihuahua on a stick. <laughs> Yeah, my wife started going nuts with the chihuahua thing, though. Uh, her little chihuahua, she named Darby. And after about a year and a half of having a little Darby, my wife decided it was time to breed the dog. So my wife got on the internet and found the three-pound stud chihuahua. <laughs> I don't know how you call anything that's three pounds a stud. But we went and picked up little Jake. He was for sale, and the owner just wanted to get rid of him. So Jake came to live at our house. He was full grown and ready to go. And uh, not long after that, Darby came in heat. Not long after that, we had three tiny little chihuahua puppies. 
The two larger ones my wife gave away, but the runt of the litter, the runt from two three pound dogs, <laughs> we decided to keep. Little Rusty is now full grown. He's a whopping 1.8 pounds. <laughs> And the cool part is he and 80 pound Bill are best friends. <laughs> I don't know how you can be best friends with someone who's the same size as your poop. <laughs> My kids question whether I'm funny or not. I pointed that out in the backyard one day. I'm a comedy genius to them now, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, the other cool part is little Rusty picked me over everyone else in the family to bond with. He likes me best, we don't know why. But I kind of like it, I come home and he runs to the front door and I pick him up, I take him to my office. I have a little uh, stuffed car, I sit on my desk and he sits in that car. <laughs> if he sits just right, it looks like he's driving around my desk. <laughs> People walk in my office and they go, oh, it's your rat, oh, it's your dog. But the bond between Rusty and me has gone beyond just companionship. There's an emotional bond there. Now, what I'm about to tell you has happened five different times, so it can't be coincidence. Now, the three chihuahuas sleep in the bed with my wife and me. And every once in a while, my wife and I will get in an argument. We'll go to bed angry. I know you're not supposed to do that, but we're tired. Little Rusty hears the argument, he knows we're not happy with each other, and apparently he takes my side because at three or four in the morning he will wake up and pee on my wife. 